Yay, guys! What's up? Welcome to another video, right? Woo! So, if you're watching this now, it's time to tell you that today I'm gonna explain to you the famous, not so famous, <laughs> just my recent awesome piece called Till Dawn and what it means to me. So, obviously, all of my artwork is open for interpretation of everyone. It can be whatever you want it to be, for real. My art can be whatever you want it to be. But of course, I have a little special story for every piece deep into my heart. So let's get into that for a little bit of a second. So ultimately, what this piece really means to me is me as a small little child looking up in the stars and, you know, dream. Dream big. As I say, when you're a child, you have to really dream big, right? So this is what this, is what this piece means to me. Just looking out the window and thinking, wow. There's so many possibilities out there, so many opportunities out there. I want to grab them all. I want all of it. And boom, I made it in an artwork. So if for that to say, today I'm going to show you a little bit of the time lapse, how I made this video. And I'm going to talk about also about my art journey along the way of 2021. So stick around, listen to that little bit of a podcast um, where I actually talk about my journey this year into my art style and what it meant for me this year to do art. So I hope you guys stick around to listen to that. And while you're listening to that, check out the process video it's a little bit longer than the ones that i posted on twitter and instagram and tiktok so enjoy this slower version so enjoy and thank you guys for watching this video for real thank you so much now let's go in two let's get into it yo so guys today i'm going to tell you the story of my 20 21 art journey so far so everybody know the whole nft thing happened big this year like big it exploded but that would be for another video this video i'm going to talk about art itself in my personal journey so let's get into that so you know i've always been creating art using photoshop and photoshop only like i literally only create created photoshop work whether using photos or i don't know some png files that you get on the internet and i really didn't even plan 3d this year like i saw people starting their 3d journey and i was like yeah i'm not ready for that you know i have so many so many things to learn still in photoshop that i don't think i'm gonna learn 3d now but you know something in me just told me Mariska, you need to learn 3D. Like, it was one of those sounds in your head that just does not want to stop. It was pounding. Like, you need to learn 3D. And one day I was just like, you know what? I'm going to start learning 3D. I tried before. And we all know the famous, the famous donut tutorial series, right? Right? So, yeah, a few years ago I did try that, but I got stuck. And no matter what I did, I couldn't continue. I don't know why, but I just couldn't continue that series for some reason. So I went on YouTube and I found this amazing guy called Grant Abbott. If you haven't heard of him, check him out. This is like a shout out to this guy because he made everything easier. Okay, he makes everything easy. So I got his 2. Point, I think it's 2.8 series on Blender and I watched the entire series and it's free. So I started from the first episode until the final episode and he made it so much fun. I I couldn't believe how easier it was when he explained the things and there it started my 3D journey started by completing his tutorial series alone you can make something immediately out of it so if you want to try it out it will be in the description grant abbott for me he's one of the best teachers regarding 3d so check it out he has really cool free stuff including how to learn blender so for that to say i learned blender and you know i started making I was getting addicted to blender like all i wanted to do was create stuff in blender i would be awake at night in my bed thinking, what am I going to create tomorrow? I'm so excited. Like, I was so excited to create art again. And 
until this time, like, I would make stuff in 3D and in 2D, 3D. I would, like, go between the two. Or sometimes I'll totally mix it up. So, it was, like, really great experimental. You know, it was really nice to experiment with all those tools. Especially learning a new program. And... When it comes to my art itself, I always wanted to tell certain stories out of my art. And, you know, sometimes I definitely screwed it up. <laughs> I would create something and the next day I'll be like, oh my word, I don't think that's good. I think that sucks. But I think all artists think this way. I think all of us have this moment where we just think the next week or the next month, even a year later. And you look at your old work and you think to, my, you think to yourself... Oh my goodness, this sucks, okay? I want to be better. And I think it's a real great way to think this way. It means you really want to improve in your skills, you want to improve in your storytelling, you want to improve as an artist. So if you're an artist and you don't feel like that about your work, <laughs> I personally feel like I don't think you will grow because you think your work is perfect. Which I doubt there is artists that think this way. So if you're an artist thinking, oh my word, my work suck, you're on the right path, according to me. Because that means you have room to improve. And as long as you have room to improve, you know, you're a true artist, in my opinion. And that's just how the art game works. So for me, personally, uh, I you know, it's trial and error to do art, really. You can't always make perfect pieces. Sometimes you think you're making something really spectacular or really awesome and at the end of the day, it's crap. Okay, it just happens. You can't make perfect art all the time. And I know you see all these um, Instagram artists or Twitter artists and they dropping bangers and bangers. It's because most of the time they have years and years of experience. Okay, years. I'm talking about 10 plus years. Okay. And then you get the artists that are most likely only showing their best work. Meaning they've made so many flops, they're just not showing you. And I think that's cool. Um, I think it's personally cool to show all my artwork. But I'm starting to feel like I, I don't want to show it anymore. I just want to show my best pieces or work on something that would totally in the end become really spectacular and really awesome and i think that's where my journey is heading towards 2022 i really want to focus on storytelling i really want to focus on good composition good art something you can look at and be like wow you know you you can relate to it or you can see a story into it like reading a book or something and I think that is where my journey is heading towards now like I really love mixing abstract with subjects I think it's really cool I love that but I think I'm gonna leave that for my personal art and not really show the public or show the world that I think that is something I will experiment within myself and just myself to look at and enjoy and then the pieces that are more detailed with story and composition and all that I will definitely make those more public but yeah, the others will be more private. In the end, if you look at it as an art journey as a whole, we all have different styles we want to create and experiment with. But we should, as a brand and to the public, you always want certain a certain style and certain work to really shine through. So I know a lot of times we want to experiment with a lot of different styles and stuff. But those styles that we experiment with can always be held personally. So the stuff that you actually want to represent as your personal brand, I think it's important to actually really create a certain style, certain story, certain composition for your personal brand. So don't let anyone tell you, hey, yo, Jack, you know, I think you should stick to a certain style, my friend, always. And then Jack would obviously re reply to, well, I am as a personal brand, but as an artist, I think I'm going to create whatever I want. But as a brand, obviously, there's a certain style. I think that is what makes us artists confused most of the time. We switch between, 
you know, different styles and we're not actually representing a specific style to our brand. And it's a mistake I also make. So it's not just random. I think a lot of artists make that mistake at first. I'm one of them. And talking to a friend recently in one of my Twitter groups, I, I really got what he was saying to me. You know, he really talked about styles and having a specific style. And now I fully understood it because my mind always were like, well, as an artist, we should create whatever we want. And in fact, that is really true. We should create whatever we want. But as a brand, as a personal brand to the public, you want to be representing yourself with some sort of style, some sort of unique, you know, uniqueness. So in conclusion, create whatever you want as an artist, but also remember you as a brand represent something, right? So choose a certain style for your brand. And as an artist, create, do whatever you want. You don't have to publish everything you create. You don't have to put everything you make in public. You know, as an artist, just explore, do whatever you want. But as a personal brand to represent yourself, yeah, you kind of have to stick to a style and brand in the end of the day. So there you have it. I'm going to take this advice and move to 2022. And hopefully I can create more story, more depth, more composition, more colors, more me mariska backer's personal brand and hope you guys stick to it i hope you guys stick with me and enjoy the journey with me i just wanted to come out and share a little bit i hope you enjoyed the time lapse video and what this piece actually represents to me and again it can represent whatever it wants with you the viewer so yeah guys that's my art journey so far in 2021 learned a lot of stuff had a lot of trial and error, so it was fun. Just remember, the errors and is is not always bad. You come up and you think, huh, I got it now. But if you didn't go through trial and error, how would you have gotten it? That's why life itself can never be perfect. Because without imperfection, how would you learn? Think about that. Until next time, guys, have a great, great day.